you have ever dreamed of being the boss of you, turning your hobby or natural born skills into a surefire successful business, Lauren Bacon and Amira Maris can not only relate to you, they are here to tell you what you need to know to start, run and maintain your own business. They are best friends and co-authors of The Boss of You. It is my pleasure to welcome Lauren Bacon and Amira Maris to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you. So the two of you got together over a lot of sushi lunches and formed <laughs> right. Raised true. Eyebrow Web Studio? That's correct. Yes. yes. Uh, that was about eight years ago now, a little over eight years ago, and um, we've never looked back. Were you best friends when you started? We were business colleagues. We worked together at the same uh, company, and we were certainly friends. We had only known each other about six months. so. And some we, how we just we just knew it was in the cards mm. from the get go. Because as you know, sometimes when business partners get together, best friends is not in the. That's mix. right. Exactly. And I think it was important that we were actually we met in a work context and we had that working relationship mm -hmm. first, and it grew into a friendship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you read a lot of books. I know you read the frilly how-to books and, the, and yes. the business tomes and yes. the a swim with the shark books and yes. all of that <laughs> exactly, about. Yes you know, starting a business and it all wasn't in there. What was missing for you? Yeah, I don't know that it's so much that something was missing overall. It was that there wasn't one guide that really had everything mm. in it. So we found that we were hunting and pecking from here and there and everywhere. And the common theme we found in business books was a lot of assumptions about what success looked like. And at the time, you know, we were coming out of the um, dot-com crash and working in IT. We have a web design company. Everything was about big profit, big growth, really fast. Mm -hmm. And we knew that that wasn't what we wanted, and it certainly hadn't really proved to work in our industry at the time. And still, business books were just really all about big profit, big growth, everything mm -hmm. fast, bigger, bigger, bigger. And for us, success was just having a job we really loved, working with clients we loved, getting paid what we were worth but that wasn't mm -hmm. the only piece of it. So values are in the mix here. Yeah, they What were. I value. Yeah, and I think, you know, values are going to vary from one person to another. It's mm -hmm. always going to be a very personal and intimate thing. And so what we really encourage is that the first step in creating a business is to define what success looks like for you. So and define your vision. Exactly. Yeah. Because Why are you going into it? Yeah. Because for some people, it's going to be a matter of you know wanting to leave at five o'clock every day and mm -hmm. have your weekends free. I mean, that could be a very clear measure of success. For other people, it's going to be grander, or it might be you know that they have a particular mission in mind in terms of where they want to funnel their profits. It's going to vary from sure. person to person. So when you define your vision, uh, if you want to go home at five and not work weekends, you don't start a restaurant. Exactly. It's right. that simple. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so now the vision is defined, uh, and how did you, when you say, like we all have dreams, but is that a vision or is it more, here's how I want my life to look in five years? Yeah, and you've got to be able to back it up with a financial end of things. So here's where I want my what my want my life to look mm -hmm. like in five years. Here's where I want my career to be in five years. And what's it going to take financially to get there? And can my business help me get mm -hmm. there financially? Okay, so what about the plan? Have a plan. <laughs> yes. what, what business book hasn't told you to make a business plan? Yeah, well, ours doesn't tell you to write a formal business plan, actually. And, you know, some people have taken us to task for that. I think there are a lot of books out there that will guide you through that process mm -hmm. if you feel that it's going to be helpful for you. So we didn't think it was necessary to reinvent the wheel there. Um, we do believe it's, re I mean, it's incredibly important to have a... Sure strong, measurable plan, but we're big believers that that plan can take whatever format works best for you. And if See, I work like that, organic. Yeah. yeah, and if you aren't going to take it to the bank in search of a bank loan, then it doesn't necessarily need to be a formal 30-page proposal, mm -hmm. right? It may be something where it's a bulletin board and you're posting up you know, your five points measure of su measures of success and your, uh, you know, this year's business goals and some pictures that inspire you or whatever. I mean, it doesn't need to be mm -hmm. necessarily artsy and creative, but it could be, right? Sure, but you do need to go to the bank at some point unless you're yeah. an heiress. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but what we found is that a lot of women entrepreneurs actually are starting businesses very small and starting with their own savings or just using their own personal credit to start their businesses and aren't necessarily going and taking huge financial risks. They aren't necessarily yeah. starting out by looking for investors. They may start their business small, grow it slowly and sustainably over a few years, and then they may reach a point where a few years in, mm -hmm. that's the point where they start 
looking at a larger scale of growth. So when it's yeah. time to set up shop, mm -hmm. yes, turn your chutney <laughs> into a uh, must-have in every yes. kitchen, <laughs> yes. yeah. turn your chutney into an empire, <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the next step? You, you always have to know the competition. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you have to know your competition. I mean, you've got to get your marketing plan in place. You do if when you're going into creating a product, financing is often really important. So mm -hmm. if you're following that realm, you have to do that. Right. You also need to figure out what you need to do in your city or your province or state, wherever you are, around business regulations. So mm -hmm. a great way to do that that every government has usually a small business office that you can go to and get right. that kind of information. Figure out what okay. you need to do around that. I have a friend who uh, invented Gone Crackers. Oh, okay. oh, yes. I was the test monkey for Gone Crackers when they weren't as good as they are now. <laughs> yes. But she she worked and worked and worked and sampled and checked the market. And yeah. it's like yeah. failing up. And we're, I'm talking to a woman on Monday who wrote a book about failing up. Yeah. But yes, you're going to fail and you're not going to have any idea how to manufacture a cracker when you decide to expand. And yes, uh, you know, the people in Burnaby do not like rosemary olive oil crackers for some reason. Right. Hey, <laughs> little surprises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think one of the things we talk about in the book is uh, understanding your own strengths and weaknesses too. And that's a big part of being a solo mm. entrepreneur, especially is understanding what other people, who else you can bring in to help support your business and help you get better at what you're doing. So if your strength is product development and maybe you're not so strong with the marketing then definitely corral in your mm -hmm. friends and bring them in and have them in the test kitchen with you and whether it's that you're making crackers or that you're making clothes or whatever you know even if you're right. providing a service it's you know? a kitchen table cabinet i know Absolutely. but why exactly. not if, yeah. it is, if it's a mini public doesn't that make sense? It yes. makes so much sense. And as long as they actually meet your target market, and so, I mean, it's important to first define mm -hmm. who your target market is. And, you know, so if you're gone crackers and you're making a premium cracker product, you know, you aren't necessarily marketing to, you know, moms who are making their kids' lunchbox. You're marketing to foodies. So bring right. in your friends who love food. Exactly. Right.